What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Coral Reef Talk. Today we're going to take a look at the hammer coral. The hammer coral gets its name from the shape of its tentacles. They're shaped, well, much like a hammer or an anchor. During the day, the tentacles of the hammer coral sway in the current, adding nice movement to your reef tank. Now, hammer corals come in a variety of different colors. Some have purple tips with brown tentacles, some have green tips. Mine, on the other hand, has green polyps that extend with the purple tips. Now, much like the frog spawn coral, the hammer coral does have a sweeper tentacle that comes out when your tank lights are off. Give it some space between other corals or else you're going to have some coral warfare on your hands. Now when selecting a hammer coral from your local fish store, make sure you pick up one where the polyps are fully extended. You never want to get a coral that has some kind of brown goo that is uh, brown jelly and you don't want to get that. Um, you don't want to pick up coral where the skeleton is showing um, or the polyps look like they are receding back into the skeleton. You want to make sure you pick up a nice healthy specimen for your reef tank so that it does well once you get it home. Hammer corals are photosynthetic so there's no need to really feed your coral uh, because it gets all its nutrients from your tank lights as long as you keep them on a stable and consistent schedule uh, they should get all the nutrients that they need. Now the zooxanthellae will grow inside of them and reproduce giving them a constant food source and as long as you keep up with your calcium and alkalinity then the coral skeleton can grow and if you pick a branching hammer coral you'll see more branches start to produce and more heads form on your coral and you'll know that your coral is growing. Now there's another form of hammer coral that I do not have in my tank it's a wall hammer so the skeleton is much like a wall it doesn't branch out like a tree so that's the uh, main difference in the way that it looks. Now even though it's not necessary to feed the hammer coral, you can still feed the hammer coral mysis shrimp or brine shrimp or any of the coral foods um, on the market. There's reef chili, you can feed uh, your corals, you can just target feed it with the turkey baster and it'll be just fine. Now with the hammer coral you can place it low on the sand bed or in the middle of your tank up on some rock work as long as it's secure and it's away from other corals so it doesn't sting them. Lighting for this LPS Euphelia coral is key to its success as it prefers low to moderate lighting. A variety of different light sources work great from the bulky metal halides to the T5 and E5 bulbs from Euroquatics and even LEDs. The hammer coral likes low flow so be sure to keep it away from any type of flow that's just blowing it around in the current. You don't want too much flow on the coral because it can damage the polyps and then it can start to recede back into its skeleton and if you're seeing that it's not good, try moving it to a lower flow area of your tank. As long as you maintain great water parameters, the hammer coral will thrive in your reef. Thank you so much guys for checking out this video. Leave me a thumbs up and comment down below on what coral you would like to see me talk about next time. And if you want one of your very own Duncan Coral t-shirts, you can follow the link below or in the description. And if you're not a part of this thing already, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time on the Coral Reef Talk.